Good afternoon, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave Office Hours. I do this uh, twice a day on Tuesdays, 9 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, to answer questions that people have about MagnaWave, about PEMF, about training, about what the machine can be used for, uh, what indications can be, ser uh, services can be applied for what type of health and what type of wellness in the body. So, like I say, two times a day on Tuesdays. It's typically a light, a light day for those in the uh, performance horse world and that type of stuff. It's a good day for most other people because the week's just getting started. So we're, we like to do it. We've had very good uh, turnout uh, for these office hours, and we look forward to answering any questions that you may have. What I'd like to do before I get started today, though, is uh, tell you about uh, an upcoming webinar that we're going to have. Let me bring this up over here. Uh, this Thursday on the Mag... Look at this. This is on Dr. Gary and I's website. Uh, where Our wave, MagnaWave Wave Wellness uh, webinar will feature Dr. Gary Nye with Integrative Veterinary Services of Missouri. And what's interesting about Dr. Nye is when you look at the services uh, that he has, he does acupuncture, chiropractic, MagnaWave, PEMF, essential oils, uh, and he integrates all of these modalities into his traditional medicine uh, as a veterinarian. So it's, it's very interesting to see how he's using these other modalities to uh, provide health and wellness for the animals that he cares for. His practice deals with large animals, horses, small animals, dogs, cats, chickens, whatever the situation may be. He's a complete uh, veterinarian. He is integrative, meaning again that he uses alternative methods of uh, dealing, alternative methods, alternative modalities to uh, to help his clients, the, the pets and animals that, that he treats. So that'll be this Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, on the MagnaWave page. If you go to the MagnaWave Facebook page, you'll see uh, this right here where you can register for the webinar. All you got to do is click the link and it'll take you in to register for what's going on. And uh, so be sure to join us Thursday, 2 o'clock, with Dr. Gary Nye. And the, the neat thing that's that's uh, good about this that you can that you can deal with is that whether you're interested in treating pets or you have pets or if you're interested in using this therapy for people or for yourself, uh, the things that he talks about in his in his practice will apply to people as well as animals. So I think you'll find it very interesting if you want to uh, gain some insight from Dr. Gary and I. That'll be this Thursday at two o'clock. I also wanted to point out that the winner of our Luberson uh, Share Contest was Barbara Anderson Van Lu. Uh, we announced that this morning during the office hour segment, and uh, so she'll be getting a, a gift package of $250 worth of Luberson products, the Luberson Human Product, their topical wound spray, the, uh, the, uh, the lip balm that they have that's excellent. I carry it with me uh, all the time. It's absolutely an incredible Product it has uh, hyaluronic acid in it as well as a very good lip balm. I just I love it. I, I'm I've always got it, and uh, so, it's, so I think you'll enjoy it too. So anyway, congratulations to Barbara Anderson Van Lu for winning that contest. We'll have some other contests coming up for attachments or for uh, other products, potentially the C60 and the HydroWave. So stay tuned and, and follow us and. Uh, Take a look at our page so you can keep up on these contests and get a chance to try out some of the products that uh, MagnaWave has available to you. And uh, see, we've got some folks uh, joining us. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box, and I'll be happy to answer for them, answer them for you at that time. So what I wanted to do today, though, is, is I've been asked uh, quite a bit various questions about some of the devices we have. And you can see behind me here is the... Uh, uh, MagnaWave Semi. That is a that's our smallest device uh, that we have. Uh, it starts in the sixty nine hundred dollar range for the human version, uh, eighty five hundred or seventy nine hundred dollars for the the equine version with a specific equine equine loops that that come with it. It's a very effective machine. It's at about fifty percent of the power of the Maya machine. 
And what that means, if you want to talk in Gauss, now the Gauss on these devices, you'll see all kinds of numbers. You'll see numbers that talk about 20,000 Gauss and 10,000 Gauss and 5,000 Gauss and all different types of settings. And people will give you a max number. They'll say a device will go to 20,000 Gauss or to 10,000 Gauss. Well, the thing that you need to realize is the Gauss is based upon, with the various units, the attachment. Each attachment, because of the way it's made, the way it's wound, will affect the amount of gauss or the amount of energy that's delivered. And, and that's the key to this therapy, delivering energy to the body in a start and stop method. It's the energy exchange that we create in the body that creates the magic that uh, is realized with regard to health and wellness with these products. Here I've got the butterfly loop. Uh, that I'll be demonstrating to you here in a few minutes with the uh, SEMI device. Now the SEMI does come in two different configurations. We have the, the travel configuration here that's in a plastic case that's, that's perfect for somebody that, that's very mobile and they're moving around whether they are a animal practice or a sports practice. If you've got a sports team and you want to use this with your team, uh, at the game or at halftime or that type of that type of situation, the traveler is perfect. It closes up like a small briefcase, weighs about six pounds, and it's just perfect for that. The office unit is a little different. It looks like a, a small type, maybe like a computer, something like that. Now the semi is exclusive to us in that it has three different settings: low, medium, and high. And, and the way, way that works is the low setting is about 40% of the high setting. The medium setting is 70% of the high setting. And then there's the high setting. This particular unit, depending on the attachment that you're using, can get in excess of 10,000 gauss if you're using the paddle or that type of thing. And then it varies with each individual attachment that you're using. So you've got a wide range of result. But again, it's not necessarily always the, the amount of gauss, it's the, it's the energy exchange. And the reason we have the three settings is because in some cases you may have someone that, that's uncomfortable on the high setting. So we use the medium setting or the low setting. Or we also find that you get the best results when you change the intensity that you're using and change the direction from which you approach the tissue. So on the semi with low, medium, and high, you can treat someone or treat a or have a session with an animal or a person, uh, whatever the situation may be, and change the intensity that you're delivering. Maybe one time we're going to use a lower uh, intensity, the next time we're going to use a more moderate intensity, and the next time maybe if we're doing something, you'll to a higher intensity. And, and the other interesting thing about how these devices work is it will cause, in many cases, a muscle contraction or a palpitation as we're using the device. And so it, you, it, if, you, if you're very sore, you may not like that much movement, so you do it a little lower and you're more comfortable as you use, as you use the device. So again, if you have any questions, um, just just put them up on the on the situation on the screen here and I'll take a look at them and I'll answer them. There is a question uh, how do the equine wings compare with the large loop in terms of gauss or power or intensity? Well here's here's what happens and and this is what's again when people some people don't talk about gauss when they talk about these devices. They talk about the energy exchange or they, they talk about the, the massage effect that's delivered to the body to stimulate the blood flow and to help oxygenate the, the blood cells so they're healthier and they do a better job. But actually when you would take the gauss delivered uh, by this particular attachment, let's say it, it delivered 5,000 gauss. And then you go to the large loop and, and or let's say it delivers 7,500 gauss. And then you go to the large loop and you might get 5,000 gauss. And you go to the, the, the equine wings, which are very large, they're 24 inches in diameter. They allow you to treat both sides of the horse. Or to a person, you can put the wings, basically you put a wing on their chest and a wing on their whole back and do them from the front to the back with two large with the, the two large uh, coils that are there. So it's very effective. Uh, you could do the hips, for example. You could lay one under your hips and one on the top and treat front, front and back with, with the large wings. But the gauss delivered, because of the size of that uh, ring, will be less than you get from the butterfly, the large loop. It's about 
oh, 12 to 15 inches in diameter, or the paddle that's, that's uh, smaller, maybe seven inches in diameter. And uh, so that's where the difference. What's amazing about when you put those wings on the horse, you have to control which setting you want. You may only want to use the medium setting because we're stimulating so much tissue and the energy exchange is going in that you don't want the horse to be uncomfortable if you're using them on a horse like that. Or if you're doing a person and you've got it on their chest and their back, you don't want them to be uncomfortable. So you might use the medium setting and again have that energy exchange. The signal is designed that if you design your signal properly, you get such a release that you do make the cell wall more permeable, cell membrane more permeable, allowing more oxygen in and toxins out, better acceptance of the proteins that the body that you're making available to the body or medications that you have in your body makes them better acceptable to the individual cells and thereby they can be healthier and better do their job. Now that same blood exchange, that same membrane, membrane exchange will occur on the low setting or the high setting. It's just a matter of the depth that you're getting when you penetrate, and, and it's a matter of the, you want a little more energy if you're dealing with, with knees or ankles or elbows or hoofs or that, that same type of thing. So again, you can use a little more energy there than you might use perhaps on the chest or something like that. So that's the difference. It is, it does vary, but the results, when you take, if you're talking horses, for example, and you use those large wave wings with the semi, you can do the neck from the pole, down the neck, to the shoulders, to the top line, to the back of the animal, very effectively, quickly, and, and uh, you get what's going on. Now they are not, they don't allow you to see, the, you see movement with the wings quite often uh, when you're doing a large animal like that, but you don't you're not going around to see where is the sensitivity, where is it on the back, where is it uh, on the hip here, that, that type of thing. Just as a person, you can, take, you can take the loop and go to somebody and put it on their shoulder and move it around and you'll be able to say it's right there. That's where I'm feeling it. It's almost like, uh, the way I, I talk about it a lot of times, it, it follows the nerve to the point of blockage. So you, you'll put it up here, but you'll, you know, you may have it sitting here, but you'll feel it back over here because it goes. It has a tendency to go to the area that needs help. It moves in that direction uh, as it does that. So I hope that clears up your, your question that, that you ask. If you have other questions about the various attachments, I'd be happy to address them as I go ahead and discuss the uh, SIMI device today. Um, one other thing that people ask a lot when it comes to these devices, the Simi or the Maya or the Max or the Pulse Pro, is they'll talk about Hertz. What's the Hertz? Can you set the Hertz? Does the Hertz change when you're doing various settings? And the Hertz is a, is a power source, basically. Look at it like it's a power coming out of your wall. And, and these are non-radio frequency devices, so they don't get up into the high range where the, for example, where the radio stations are, 970 and 1340 and all that type of stuff. They're low. They're, they're low voltage. Low, uh, they're high voltage, low intensity. But the Hertz... Um, is just is or basically it's just a power source coming into the machine, the electricity that's coming into the machine. Once it hits the machine, it's regulated and becomes DC. So the Hertz really has no bearing on what's going on with our devices. Now there are devices that people have designed and they say, well, we're going to set the Hertz over here and we're going to set this over there and this is what it's going to work on. And, and that's fine. Now, the bottom line comes down to what type of result are you receiving when you use those types of devices? Whether, you know, and some of them work wonderfully. Others, you know, maybe they're not as fast as, as particular machines or whatever the situation may be. But in these devices, uh, the Hertz, uh, they operate between 50 and 60 Hertz. And the, and the Hertz it really has no bearing. Uh, as I've mentioned, once it's into the machine, it's, it's regulated, becomes DC current, and then it, it's a totally different situation. So the Hertz doesn't have anything to do with it. You know, and we try to keep it simple. You know, if I had to tell you that you got to put it here and you move it over here and then you set it over there and you punch this button, that's a lot for somebody to, to learn and know. It's a lot for someone to keep up with. And everybody's different. How can you say that, that this is perfect for this person or this is perfect for that person? 
uh, with these devices. It's, it's how often you use it. The more you use it quite often, the better result that you receive. And if you're dealing with with a, a, ankle, a with wrist issue, you may treat it today and you get two or three hours worth of relief. You come back and do it again tomorrow, you might get five hours worth of relief. If you come back the next day, you might get 10 hours or you might get all day relief. The more you do it, the longer the result lasts. And in some cases, you might treat someone consecutively for 30 days and then stop and they get a few weeks worth of relief. And then you come back and you treat them once or twice and they get another three weeks worth of relief. So that's kind of how it how it plays out when you use it in, in that type of situation. Let's see, we have another question here. Um, I feel like I see better results using the large loop compared to the wings. Is this accurate or just maybe my preference? Well, that's a very good question, uh, Mandy. And, and what happens is people become familiar. You pick your go-to attachment. You know what you want to use. Now, in, in the area of finding areas of sensitivity and very well working on those areas of sensitivity, you can get a, a deeper, you can get a more uh, powerful uh, indication with the large loop than you might get with the with the wings and so I kind of look at it uh, when the wings first came out when we first had the wings available to us I mean we all do silly things I didn't want to use the wings I liked when I was treating regularly on a daily basis my go-to was pretty much the butterfly and so I would use it it would take me longer but I'm stimulating this area of tissue if I'm doing somebody's hand I'm getting their hand just like that or a knee or a horse, I can move around their back, or a dog, I can get right on the area of, of their having hip dysplasia, I can get right on the hip, produce maximum energy that they're comfortable with in that area, and use that. So, the, the, but the wings are great, they're spectacular for a, for a nice, effective, quick, overall treatment. And, and so you just move, and so it's like it's like a massage that you're giving to the to the whole horse in a relatively uh, short period of time that produces a nice result. If I was working on a a horse that I knew had sacral issues, then I'd want to be with the paddle or the wing or the butterfly that I can go right on the sacrum or even the large loop to go right on that area and put all the energy right there. So it's a great question. And, and you, you can, with the various attachments, be more focused than you are with the large wave wings. But you can cover more territory with the large wave wings. And so it's a matter what you're looking to do. Some horses just need a good massage once a week before they go compete and they're fine. Others get a little inflammation in their knees and they need those knees done. Well, the large wave wings aren't going to do the knees like a butterfly is. And it's the same thing on, a, on an athlete or someone has a sore shoulder. You, I fell a few months ago here and, and uh, messed up my rotator cuff a little bit and so I when I when it gets to bother me it, it, sometimes when I sleep on it it bothers me so I'll just get up and I'll put this on with the semi at home for five ten minutes maybe and bingo it's better I feel better all day long and so that's that was a very good question and I hope I was able to uh, to answer the question Mandy I hope that hope that helps out but you do kind of land with the attachment that, that you like to use. I've had veterinarians come in for hands-on training and we go out to Churchill Downs or we treat in the office on a dog or something like that and they walk away loving the paddle. They go and they use the paddle for everything and that's fine. You know, they, they're all doing the same thing. It's just a matter of the area that you're covering, the intensity that you're delivering to that area. So I don't want to belabor that. I just, uh, great questions. And let's see, I want to make sure there's not something uh, I've missed. Um, oh, here's a question. I have a semi, and is it best to go low and slow, or does it depend on the injury of the horse and myself? Also, when using the butterfly, is it best to be used for, for pinpoint areas? Well, there's three questions there, basically. Uh, is it best to go low and slow? Well, what I always like to talk about is it's, it's best to, again, I've mentioned energy exchange. So if the energy, you want the energy delivered comfortably. Now the semi, it, the semi device is designed that it's not going to become, in 90% of the situations, not going to be uncomfortable to use on a small animal, a person, or, or a horse. 
uh, because it is a lower power unit. And, and so when, when you're applying to various areas, you want as much energy that is comfortably received. If it, if, and, and, you know, when you, when you treat somebody and their shoulders jerking or their eyes are, it's the same thing on a person or a horse. When it's, when it's more, when they're not comfortable, then, you know, they're, you know, they kind of look at you, get the big eyes or the horse will turn around and look at you with, with the big eyes or they're kind of glazed or they're pin their ears or they look at you like you're going to take your head off. Then, you know, you, you're using mo a little more intensity on that particular area than the animal or the person is comfortable with. But that's the key. So is it good to go low and slow? It's fine to go low and slow. Low and slow takes more time. So when you're when you're working on a on an elbow, I want to get the energy in there. So I'll put it on high for ten minutes and and get the energy in there. So you've got some immediate result. If you put it on low, it might take you thirty minutes to get the result that you get in ten or in five minutes at the higher setting. So uh, the key is comfort. Uh, the key is the time that you have available and, and what you're wanting to do. Now, there is a whole school of thought. When Bob Dennis, Dr. Bob Dennis, who I talk with a lot and who was at our event this last year and spoke to everyone, and has, I've got a webinar with him uh, on the podcast section. If you go to the MagnaWay website, go to the About tab and look there, and it'll have podcasts. And you can go see all the various podcasts that we've done with, with uh, various people and, and see those podcasts and, uh, and talk talk about them. Now I kind of lost my thought. I was talking about Bob Dennis. And, and but what, what we've done, and isn't that amazing when you just forget what you were talking about because you started talking about something else because I was talking about this. But it'll come to me in, in just a minute. If someone can tell me what I was talking about, just put it on the page there. And, <laughs> and, I, and I'll, go, I'll go cover it. But um, so I'm sorry. I lost the whole chain, whole chain of thought there. Um, oh, slow, low and slow. I got it. Thank you. Um, Dr. Dennis was talking about in his NASA study. Uh, they found that there's a little bit, and, and I, uh, there's a little bit of improvement in the healing process on a lower setting. So, it, and, and so a lot of people like to have a low, low voltage, low frequency, low frequency machine, and they use that, and they feel that that promotes the healing. The challenge is it takes longer uh, initially to start getting the result that you're wanting to deal with. Now, and, and so if you can get to where you're using a higher setting to get rid of the inflammation and then a low setting to help promote healing a bit, then you're in good shape. Now, our studies with our devices that have been done, which we've done two at this point um, in Cuba, we did two studies in Cuba, both on one on knee pain, one on lower lumbar uh, back pain. And using the machines as in the principle that I discussed, where you, it's about the energy exchange and how much energy you put in the area comfortably, the results were didn't make any difference. The, the healing time was quick, the pain relief was quick, and the ultimate healing of those who could be healed. You know, a lot of people have indications that that can't be healed because it's anatomical. It's a spur, it's a break, it's a pinch. It's something that, that's just always going to be there, kind of like arthritis. Once you get it, you can make it feel better, but it's tough to make it absolutely go away. But now when you have something, something that you're trying to heal, it's an open wound and you want to get it to heal and you want to use it, what I always recommend is treat it at different intensities, different directions, and to promote the healing of that particular area. So low and slow is fine, just going to take you a little longer. Uh, and but the healing re results, and, and Dr. Dennis talks about that when, when we do talk or he's been in the webinars, when he says, you know, I use the, I would recommend the higher intensities to get after the inflammation, get things under control, and then use a lower intensity to help heal or alternate your intensities to help things heal and, and progress along in that fashion. The other part of the question, uh, does it depend on the in injury of the horse and myself? Well, of course. Um, and what it means by that is what intensity you want to use when, when you're dealing with a horse or with a person. Uh, and, and people will do that. They'll, you know, they'll say, okay, if you're treating someone's head, you know, if you're using it on, on, a, on a stroke person or someone that, that, that's got PTSD or someone that's got some depression issues or that type of thing, and you might put a loop over the head and resting on the shoulders, or you would, might even put it at the area of cognition or where the injury is, you'll have it on a low setting because you don't, you want it to be, certainly you want it to be comfortable. You don't want to overstimulate anything in, in that area. And so it can be used very effectively 
in that manner and on lower settings when you're doing specific injuries. Another injury, like I talked about, when I do my shoulder, when, when it's hurt me, I turn it as high as I can. I turn it all the way up and I just put it on there and I'll get a little movement and everything everything is fine. Now, one other thing about the semi that I want to, uh, to show you, and, and this is why it was designed this way, is that the semi operates with two signals at the same time. It's got a very rapid signal that is the lower frequency. The faster it clicks, the lower the frequency or the lower the power. The slower it clicks, the higher the intensity. So the semi will deliver both at the same time. And I, I want you to, to hear it. When I first turn it on, what you'll hear is just the higher intensity, what I'm going to call the inflammation reduction, the pain relief part of the device and then I'm going to use this clicker here and you will be able to hear the lower sound uh, or the lower frequency at the same time. So I should come on, oh I think I turned it off, let me turn it on here. Okay, so now you can hear the the inflammation part, the higher setting of the machine. Now I'm going to take my little device here and you're going to hear the low frequency and the high frequency at the same time. So you hear the one clicking in the background. And when I was first introduced to this device, and I, I thought, gee whiz, it's just not the power of the Max, or it's not the power of uh, the, the Maya, or even the Pulse Pro, and those types of things. But when I used it, and you combine those two signals together, and, and so you're really putting a nice energy exchange into the body, the results were amazing. You, you, you can get really good results. The difference? between, as I've talked about, they both do the same thing. All these devices do the same thing because they're high voltage, low, intent, low frequency devices. The difference is the flexibility. If you're going to use the semi and you're going to work on someone's knee, if they're an athlete, it's going to take longer treatments. You might treat that knee for 30 minutes instead of 10 minutes on a higher intensity machine that you turn it up and you treat it for, for 10 minutes. If time is an issue, then you need a higher powered machine. If time is not an issue, then you can get great results with this type of unit, with the semi unit, uh, for what you want to do, whether it's a small animal you want to take care of, a horse that you want to do your own horses, or using it for your own pets and yourself at home to stay ahead of situations. People do that all the time. So that gives you an idea of how the signal is delivered uh, with this particular device, and it is, like I said, it is low, medium, and high. Let's see if there's any... Uh, uh, and there's that she had one last question. Okay, when using uh, when using the butterfly, is it best to pinpoint areas? Well, the butterfly or the paddle. Um, when you talk about pinpointing an area, uh, there when people are interested in acupuncture and they want to stimulate acupuncture points. And in our training, we show how if you're treating the back of a horse, you want to treat the area where the horse is sore or my back is sore. Well, we'll also treat the acupuncture point on my body that works on, on my back. Or when we treat people with headaches, we may treat the back of the head. We may do this for the headache, but we'll also treat the feet because it's like reflexology. So the, if you're doing a, I call it acupuncture for dummies, as long as you know the area of the acupuncture point where it is, and if you get near it with this, you're going to stimulate the acupuncture point. And it works out very well like that. So the, the, the paddle and this are very effective for points, acupuncture points, pressure points. You can stimulate an acupuncture point. I hope I get all five of them. But you can use a needle. You can cut. You can use pressure. You can use a laser. Or you can use pulsing magnetic therapy to stimulate those acupuncture points to open the meridians or help clear things up. I had a situation in... I always tell these stories. I had a situation a few years ago in Florida uh, where I was treating horses for a particular trainer, a racehorse trainer, every day. We'd go and we'd treat uh, this number of horses or the ones that he felt we needed to do that day. And so one day he came to me and says, I'm going to have an acupuncturist come out this afternoon and see what they see on these horses. And I said, okay. I didn't think about it. I really, you know, we learned every day as, as we went along. And so I, the acupuncturist comes out that afternoon and goes to the horses. I don't know. They're all, you know, everything's opened up. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. And I, I don't know, you know, what's going on. Well, we stimulated all the acupuncture points on the horse 
that that particular acupuncturist was looking for. So we learned a lesson. If someone's going to have an acupuncturist, or if you're going to do acupuncture on yourself, you want to do the treatment afterwards. You want to get the acupuncture done so they can work their magic and tell you what's going on, open the meridians, get everything working. Then if you still got pain in that shoulder, treat it afterwards because they can, they can work their magic with their hands. We've got a lot of practitioners who use these devices and they're massage therapists, whether they're doing massage therapy on people or massage therapy on dogs or, or horses, but they'll use their hands to see what's going on and to, because they've got years of training to be able to feel and run their fingers down your neck or your back and tell you where you've got the lump over here or tell you where the horse has got an issue or the dog's got an issue. And, and then they'll go use this to do the treatment because it goes so deep. We can penetrate up to 40 inches. So we're going real deep into the tissue. It's very hard. Now when you're treating someone's shoulder, it's not so hard to get a lot of pressure on it. But if you're doing a big dog or you're doing a, a large animal, then it's, you know, it's a little harder to get that deep tissue that you want to get because of the massive expanse of tissue that they have uh, in their body. So I hope that answers those questions, Serena. And let's see, we have another question. Uh, what about eyeglasses? I'm seeing a woman who is very sensitive to light. Can I treat her on a very low setting? What about for, oh, well, what not eyeglasses? What about eye issues? Uh, so very uh, sensitive to light. Well, there are stories and, and anecdotal stories, and, and you go into, if you go to MagnaWave, not MagnaWave, if you go to PEMFinfo.com, you can put issues in the search bar and uh, you can put eye issues and you'll these studies will come up on how they've been performed around the world for eye issues how they might use uh, PEMF therapy for eye issues but if you uh, have had people do this so where they've got uh, glaucoma issues or other things like that and they hold the coil up to their face and they'll put it on a comfortable setting and they'll feel it twitching in their eyebrows a little bit and they're treating the eye and they're really penetrating into the eye helping the blood flow, helping the oxygenation of the cells in the eye, doing some stimulation there. And people have talked about they have, they've improved their eyesight or they've been, you know, any number of situations. So, of course, you could treat somebody, you could put, you know, and, and the way you do it is you put it on and you move it to where it's comfortable. And, and it, you know, you move it too close, you get, you get twitching that may become uncomfortable to one person, but comfortable to, to someone else. I've had folks that use it for, um, uh, what do they call it, tinnitus, to where you have, and I have horrible tinnitus, and of course I'm, I'll tell you my story, but my, I, you know, I, I, I've got my machine and I forget to use it half the time because <laughs> I'm doing other stuff. But you, you can put it right on your ear, and again, you're stimulating improved blood flow into the area as you're treating, and it can, folks have said that they've gotten good results with regard to ear issues, uh, tinnitus, and various and sundry other issues that they that they may have. So, uh, yes, you, the, the, she's sensitive to light. I mean, she could wear her, if she wears glasses to shield her eyes from the light, that doesn't mean that you can't treat. I mean, I could treat my eyes with my glasses on, or sunglasses, or, or whatever. Uh, if you're treating for the eye issue or if you're treating her for a back or a neck, whatever it may be, uh, providing sessions for those types of those types of issues. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. But yes, you could certainly approach that. Now, it, it's like everything. We're not healing anything. We don't, we're not saying it's going to heal anything. And you want to make sure that it's okay. It's important for people to consult their physician if they desire to do that and to make sure that they're, they're doing something that's within the, the confines of, of, their, of their treatment. We certainly want to always recommend that. Talk to your vet, talk to your doctor, whatever whatever it may be. Now, there are some people that are familiar with it. They're going, to, they're going to understand what you're talking about, and they're going to say, yeah, we'll do this or do that. And there's other people are going to say, I don't know anything about it. Maybe you shouldn't do it. You just have to do what you're comfortable with and how that, and how that works out. Let's see. Um, I experienced this last week. First treatment, full body. Second was associating uh, points only and achieved great results. Now starting to incorporate points into most treatments. Shannon, thank you for the question. And that's why in our training, we do associate points into the treatments. Uh, because if you 
you know, there are some people that don't believe in acupuncture, or not want to say they don't believe, they just, they're skeptical or they don't understand, but the people that do and embrace it and know where the points are and know how to use them, it's certainly, uh, and Shannon, it's a great question, certainly why not do what you can do to stimulate the overall wellness of the body? And, and, uh, and that's why we do it in the training is to highlight some of those things to do it that way. It's kind of like the headache. The headache thing was an accident. We've had so much that we've learned, but not by accident, but by just, oh, gee whiz, this will do that. But when we treat, when I used to treat folks for headaches, we opened the butterfly up and put it, you know, behind their head or you put it like this or, or wherever the, the stress may be. And quite by accident, one day somebody said, you know, my feet are bothering me. Can I put this on my feet? Sure. I'd already treated them for a headache. Put it on their feet and bingo. The headache was gone even better than it was. I mean, it, it dissipated with the with up here, but when they put their feet involved, it, it just cleared up everything. And then we got to realize, well, sure, you got all this reflexology and stuff that takes all the nerves go to your feet, so you're stimulating every, your whole body potentially by treating your feet, so why not? And, and you're absolutely right. It may enhance the results that you receive tremendously. And we, we learn that all the time. Kind of like the sacrum. Uh, when I first started, I was dealing with horses at that time, and, and of course now we're moving more into people, small animals, and still a lot with horses. Uh, and and uh, but we, we were going along, and, and everybody said, "Oh, my horse is having stifle issues," and I'd go treat the area of the stifle, and no result. But I'd move up the back, and I'd find something in the hips, or we'd go up to the sacrum and put the coil on the sacral area of the horse, and all of a sudden we'd see movement in the left hip. And we go over to the left hip, we get movement, but you go up to the sacrum and you'd get hip, you'd get in the left hip, nothing in the right hip. And so we learned that, it, or that means there's something going on deep into that area of the body. So we'd work that and then this would be better. And so it's kind of what Shannon is talking about by working, we work the hip, but if we also will work the sacrum, we're getting something good. Uh, it takes me back to my story. Uh, and, and some of those, some of you have heard this, I apologize, but I uh, had a practitioner call me one day, had a million dollar horse that he was working on, a hunter jumper, and he said, boy, we work on this horse and he does better and he feels good and he goes and, and just, you know, fe looks great in the practice ring over here and around the barn, goes to the show ring and he doesn't do anything. He doesn't want to do anything and he's, he used to do great. And, and we said, well, have you treated the pole? Well, no, we'll go treat the pole. So we go treat the pole on the horse on the top of its its head and the horse went out and won a hundred thousand dollar grand prix the next day. So the horse just needed relaxation, concentration, and so everything else was working. He had the fluidity that he wanted, he had everything, but he he was a little off <laughs> up here. So we treated the pole and that became a very regular type of treatment for that horse. And so you, you want to be able to add and combine. It's kind of like Dr. Nye is going to talk about on Thursday in, in the webinar is, is the using the complementary methods to approach different in, different indications or different situations to just allow the body better perform on its own. So great, great question, uh, Shannon. Thank you so much. Um, so, okay, if you have any other questions, please uh, feel free to, to ask them, and I'd be happy to answer them for you uh, at this time. So that's a little bit about the, I want to show you the semi again. It's a smaller unit, weighs about six or seven pounds. It's in a metal, a metal case. Uh, this is the one of the devices that we are safety testing. Uh, most other companies do not safety test their devices, uh, but we want to be able to export these devices for human use in other countries. We want to be able to apply or finish our uh, application with the FDA in the United States, which requires things be safety tested if they're going to be used in clinics and that type of thing. So the SEMI is one of the units that is safety tested. Uh, and then the same guts are in some of the other units, but for purposes of various certifications, CE numbers, uh, product liability, and all that type of stuff, you need various testing, and some companies don't do any testing at all. I'm not saying that their devices are dangerous. I'm just saying some companies don't test, other companies do. Our factory does test because we want to make sure that everything is perfect uh, in that regard. But this is the, the semi office unit, clinic if you want to call it that, and then the semi uh, traveler, as we call it, is uh, low, medium, and high. And that low, medium, and high, as I've said, is exclusive to MagnaWave. That is our settings that we had programmed into these devices. So it gives you a wider range 
uh, treatment specifically with the wings. If you want to use those wings, there's just times on the high setting that on certain horses or large animals, the wings are not comfortable. You go to the medium setting, uh, it, you get a much better result, much more comfort uh, when you do that. So we're happy with that and it's working out very well for the folks that are using the device uh, in that fashion. Um, so that's the semis. The, and I was, like I said, I've been asked those questions a lot, and so I wanted to kind of cover the semi today so you can understand. The primary difference, as I've already said, I believe that the, between the semi and the higher power devices is the, the flexibility that you have when you want to go treat an abscess or you want to get after a sore ankle or a twisted ankle on an athlete. You want that high intensity so you can get rid of that inflammation right now. When you talk about athlete and athletic situations, they'll pull a hamstring or they'll twist a knee or they'll do something like that, and, and that's bad enough, and you got to get after it. But a lot of times, the inflammation occurs and grows and exacerbates the problem, really makes things, in some cases, worse than they were without the inflammation. I once had a young lady that was a, 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 a hunter jumper, and she broke her ankle and they were going to take her to the hospital, and she was in a lot of pain, and I was there, and so I said, look, let's put this on, let's make it feel better until the ambulance gets here, or the car gets here that's going to take you to the hospital, treated her ankle, it was ended up being about seven or eight minutes, she felt in less pain, so, you know, when you break your ankle, you're going to have pain, but she felt in less pain uh, when she left, and she got to the hospital, and there was no inflammation, and the doctor said, well, I, I don't know if it's broken, when they x-rayed it, it was broken, and uh, but we already helped. We don't want the inflammation to occur if we can keep it from occurring, and and so that's because the pain comes from the inflammation. Anytime you have inflammation, you have pain, and almost all pain is a result of some type of inflammation. You can have inflammation in the capillaries of your body that you really don't know, you can't see, it's not inflamed, but they're inflamed, and they're causing discomfort, in your hands or your ankle or your wrist, wherever it may be, and it's brought out by whatever is exacerbated it. Inflammation caused the pain to increase. And so that's how those uh, situations occur as, as we deal with them. So, uh, again, any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them if it's about the semi or about anything else that, that you may want to know about the modality. Uh, what can this be used for? Well, in... People talk about that a lot. You know, someone will say, well, can I use it on, on uh, uh, this sickness? Or can I use it on this disease? Can I use it on this condition? Will it heal that condition? We don't heal conditions. We, we, we don't say that this is going to take uh, uh, this condition and make it better. All we do is we reduce some inflammation. We help relieve pain. We allow the blood cells to be better oxygenated with the oxygen that they have available to them. And that improved oxygenation and improved blood flow can, can lead to miracles in the body by the body taking care of itself. And so that's basically what we do. And, and it, it gets, it's interesting sometimes. Aaron, our training director who just had a baby and is, is currently on maternity leave, but people will ask, well, how should I treat this? Or what is the protocol for treating that? Or what is the guideline for treating this? And Aaron kind of looks at me and says, put it on and treat it. And it, it's really that simple. Put it on the area and treat it. And put it on the body and improve the oxygenation. That's why we quite often, when we, when we treat someone, we may be treating a shoulder, but we want to treat the whole torso in some fashion as well because we want all the blood in the body to have the ability to reoxygenate itself as best as it can, to have good improved blood flow. We don't want blood that's stacked up, they call it rolu, where blood stacked up like a row of quarters. We want the blood to be free and moving, you know, together, not stacked and tightly together. We want it to, and so when you create that type of situation in the body, or allow the body to better enhance that type of situation with simply an exchange of energy, I call it energy supplementation, you, you, you allow the body to better heal itself. So that kind of brings that whole, that whole situation around. Uh, let's see, how often would you treat a horse with a quarter crack? Um, well, quarter crack is something that you certainly want the, the, soul, the, the, the 
the, the hoof to grow. You want it to better heal. And so I, I would, my answer would be I treat it as often as I could or as often as the client would allow. And uh, is it going to help to treat it once a week or twice a week? Yes. Is, is, is it going to speed the, the ability of the hoof to grow? Yes. To, to heal, it's going to allow the, the hoof to better heal itself. But if you really want to do it, you want to do it every day. So if you've got a quarter crack, I, I, do it, I do it as often as you have the availability to do it. If that's three times a week, I do it three times a week. If that's every day for three weeks or two weeks to, to watch it heal out and, and, and recover, that's what I would do. Uh, if I can only do it once a week, I'd do it once a week because that energy is going to go in there and it's going to help nourish that area and help nourish it to, to better heal itself. That, that's the thing. But in, in the perfect world, if I had a quarter crack, I would do it. Uh, every day uh, to make it better. Uh, Gervin, the horse that, that we were sponsoring in the Kentucky Derby this year, uh, that then that did go on to win the Haskell at, at, at Monmouth Park, a million dollar race at, at Monmouth Park, had quarter crack issues this spring. And so we were treating, helped treating the hoof on that horse and, and he was able to run, able to compete, but he had a quarter crack. So, you know, it did limit what he could do, but he was able to compete in the race uh, because of of getting the help from various things. We were complimentary. They were doing other stuff certainly to help that quarter crack, but that's why we did it and they were doing it uh, pretty much every day. So that's, I hope that answers your question uh, on the quarter crack. Pulling abscesses. Uh, the more powerful machines, if you're pulling an abscess in a horse's foot, will help pull that abscess in one or two treatments. Uh, and whereas with the semi, I've seen abscesses pulled. I saw an abscess pulled. We treated it on a Thursday for 30 minutes instead of with the Max machine. You might have treated it for 8 to 10 minutes. Treated it on, uh, I take it back, it was a Saturday. Treated it on a Saturday for 30 minutes. They called me and said, we have a semi. We want to treat this. What should we do? 30 minutes. And then I was at the farm on Tuesday doing some training, hands-on training with some folks. And we treated the abscess again for about 10 minutes before we left and it pulled that evening. So it's the energy exchange and, and how that particular problem is going to accept that energy and better utilize that energy to better heal itself. So, uh, so that's how that, hope that answers your question, um, uh, Idle Hour. Appreciate it. That's a, that's a very good question. Any other questions, folks, I'd be happy to uh, address them for you at this point. It's been a great exchange. I hope this helps you give you a better idea of how the semi can fit into a practice. Uh, we have practices, chiropractic practices, that have three or four of these. Uh, one has three, and maybe he's got four now. Sets them up in different rooms. So they're almost, uh, from, the, from the human treatment standpoint, if a chiropractor is using it or an acupuncturist is using it in their practice, it's a hands-free kind of thing. I mean, you go sit down on the thing, you punch the button, you sit there for 10 minutes, you feel better. Maybe you'll punch it twice and sit there for 20 minutes and treat the back or treat the issue on the animal that, that you're that you're dealing with. The other beautiful thing about this for someone having it into in a practice, and this is kind of developing this way. We thought that that would, would, which would happen when we introduce these devices is you have people that have the more powerful units that they're using for the acute, for the quick, let's get rid of the inflammation right now uh, type of thing. But now this, this person needs to take this home and use it every day for the next week. So with the SEMI unit, it affords you the opportunity to do that or to be able to treat things that are not as acute, that need the, that quick, quick response that you can treat them two or three times, and boy, they're feeling better, and away they go. They go out and they work in the yard. I do that. I go out and I work in the yard too much on the weekend, and, and all of a sudden I'm all uh, gardener's lament or whatever it is. Uh, I come in and treat myself uh, that evening, and things, things feel better. So people will use it in that type of fashion. Very portable, very effective. Uh, for easy use in, in that way. Uh, very effective if you have a practice and you've got a larger machine for this and you can have somebody else using this machine over here with the wave wings giving a nice overall treatment quickly and, and away you go. So it's very versatile and, and fits into someone's practice uh, perfectly. Um, so that's a little bit of how it can be used uh, in, that type of, in that type of situation. I see that the questions have kind of slowed down here a little bit. We've been at this now for about 50 minutes. Uh, it's always enjoyable. I enjoy telling stories of what's happened over the years uh, since we've been doing this. I've been doing uh, PEMF therapy since 2002, 
and uh, the higher voltage PEMF therapy. I was first introduced to it in 2005 with a machine that I didn't care at all how it worked. It, it, it just was not comfortable. The only way you could control it was by moving it back and forth. You couldn't control it from the device itself. Uh, we started our using our machines in 2007 and uh, brought developed MagnaWave at that point and you know the rest has been uh, we've been blessed at the way that things have gone and how we've been able to participate in the health and wellness of so many animals and so many people it's just very rewarding uh, to see people get the results and, and to feel better uh, by utilizing this type of uh, device. The modality people ask all the time what is is P, is MagnaWave or is are these devices FDA approved? Well we're working on that but the modality is FDA approved for non-union fractures. It's, there's a device out now that they're using for brain tumors. It kind of put it over the head and uh, you, they'll, they'll, it'll shrink tumors and in some case uh, really slow down the progression of tumors. Uh, there's a device that they're using for depression uh, there's a device that they're using for TMJ, uh, for autism. Uh, so it is FDA approved in various devices. Uh, incontinence in women, there's a device that's for that. Our, these devices will do all of that uh, if someone wants to use devices uh, how they see fit. Uh, they're, they're, uh, and, and people ask, well, what are these devices? How are they, how are they, are they okay to use? These devices are class one or class two. It's called class one, class two, off the shelf type of device. They're non-invasive. Uh, there's no fear from using them. They're not doing anything invasively to the body. So it's an off the shelf device, just like you go to Walgreens or some store and buy a little tens unit or buy a little magnetic therapy unit. That's that's what they are and, and how are, and how they're used. And and uh, we don't diagnose. We don't treat any diseases or anything like that. We're just supplying energy to the body and allowing the body to better heal itself. So that's that's how that kind of plays out. Let's see. What's the general hour life on a max? How many hours will it go? The max machine, uh, and that's a, another very good question uh, for the semi as well as, as the max machine. The max machine uh, and the Pulse Pro machines are, at, are what they call spark gap devices. Some people will call them plasma delivery systems to try to dress it up uh, or whatever, but they are an actual spark chamber. You have two, electrical dia uh, two electrodes together and you generate the electricity and a spark jumps between the two electrodes. And that's what supplies the energy that moves through the coil to create the magnetic field that penetrates the body in the design of the wave. Well, you've got these two electrodes. The closer they're together, then the lower, it's a sharp spark or a, like a lightning bolt that's way away. If you move it out here, it's a bigger spark and the lightning bolt's right next door to you. So again, it generates the energy. The digital devices, the Maya and the Semi, are done electronically through a, through a computer type chip situation that generates that energy and generates that field. So it doesn't have a spark gap. So to answer the question, uh, Mandy, is that it depends how the spark chamber is used. If it's used at a moderate setting, you know, sometimes high, sometimes low, sometimes moderately, I've seen these machines uh, go for 800 to 1200 hours before the spark chamber needs to be uh, reworked or replaced. Uh, when you deal with, uh, uh, if you're dealing, I've had somebody, some people that, that treat abscesses all the time in horses, or they're treating athletes and they're turning it up higher all the time, then that might be shortened. You might find yourself in a range where the spark chamber will last 450 to, to 600 hours, seven, maybe 700 hours. So it's how you use the device that impacts the life of that particular spark chamber. It's not designed to go so many clicks and quit uh, or that type of thing. So it, it's the intensity, the high, the high power that you're using it because what, what happens when the spark chamber wears is you've got these two uh, electrodes here and they can go down to where they're, when it's not working, you've got them touching basically. And so as you separate them, you start generating the spark and then you, you go. Well, they will wear out. So what happens is over time, you get it to where you can't get them any closer to this. So you can't turn the machine down. You can't get it down to here because they're worn to the point that that's as close together as they get. Well, that's when you need to replace them and, and have them replaced so they work the way they're supposed to. 
and so the, and, and how high you use it, you know, you can imagine if you're using it up here all the time and you got that big bolt of lightning running back and forth between these two things, they'll deteriorate more rapidly. And so in, in a fewer number of hours. So, and then I, I guess that also comes down to if someone, if some people do it months. I've got people that are treating, uh, they're doing sessions, 13 and 14 sessions a day. At, at anywhere up to 40 minutes a session, well, they'll go through that life of that spark chamber pretty quick. They might go, yes, it'll be figured in hours, or in their case, they say, well, it's been four months now, and I, I'm kind of losing some control. But they're using it 13 hours a day, treating a lot of a lot of folks. So that's hope that answers your question. The general life, I would say, on a spark chamber is between, between uh, 600 and 1,000 hours. Uh, there are machines, I've got practitioners that have machines in the field that have been out there now for 12 years and they've never been back to the factory and the spark chamber is working great. So they're, they're using it enough that they're happy with it and, and they like it that way and so there you go. Uh, so it can have a very long shelf life. The, the, the digital devices are designed that potentially they will work for years and years with no need for any type of of upkeep. They do have capacitors, they do have resistors and things like that that could wear out or could break, but they're not, you know, they're not designed uh, for that to happen. And we, I've had this, tell this story all the time that I've had people have their machines and I've watched them fall off of golf carts and fall out of trucks and get dropped over here and get dropped by the baggage handlers and that type of thing and they never have a problem and then tomorrow they go outside, they go over a three foot or a three inch curb and bingo, something just finally clicks on the inside and falls apart and quits working. It needs to be repaired, but they're very durable and, and the digital devices uh, should last virtually maintenance free uh, from that perspective. The other neat thing about the digital devices is let's say uh, uh, next week someone discovered that this particular waveform or this particular strength with this waveform will most assuredly wipe out this situation. And they go get FDA approval for that. And so there you have it. So these machines can be reprogrammed to deliver a specific power, specific signal, specific intensity to address those kind of situations. So someone can have a machine that they use specifically for this condition. A doctor could have it and use it for that condition and use them accordingly. Uh, so that's the kind of neat thing about the digital devices is it can be programmed if something changes in the future to change the program. The spark chamber devices are the way Tesla designed them 150 years ago. The coils, the, the paddle on the coil is the Tesla coil design that, that Nikolai Tesla used. And so we use it with our coil and it's wonderful and it, it does a great job. But that's been around for 150, 200 years and, and that's what it does. Digital, a little different in terms of programming in the future. So let's see. Um, so it looks like that's taken care of most of the questions. People are thanking me. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to you guys for being here and uh, putting up with my uh, rambling in, in some cases. It's, it's been fun, and I, I want to thank you for uh, joining me today, and I'll be back. Now. Oh, wait. Will the Max ever get converted to digital, or will stay Spark? Well, the Max will stay Spark. The Maya is the digital version of the Max. Um, and and the, so the Max will always be a Spark chamber machine, and there's people that like that, and they want to use that, and they want to have that device. The Maya uh, is the digital version of the Max. Um, and it, it's a little weaker than the Max, just, you know, 15% perhaps. Uh, and the reason for that is when we were first in our processes with the FDA, they felt like we want to be able to measure the 1 through 10 uh, on where you're at on your settings. And we want it to be a 10 every time. And you can't do that with the Max because it's spring controlled. So what, what is this on the dial today may change in six months. But with the digital, you put it on a five and you got a five all the time. And, and so that's how that plays out. And that was designed to be effective for CE approval in other countries and for FDA and safety approval here in the United States as we work uh, down that road. And to that end, um, the, the safety testing on these devices is complete. Uh, we're just waiting now for the report to be issued from the from the testing bureau. Uh, uh, and it's not a report saying it's not approved. It's a report saying it is approved. But there's bureaucracy and there's things that, and you know they have to go through their their channels and it takes time. But the, all the testing is complete on the on the semi and the Maya device, and we're just waiting for the uh, letter of of conclusion 
of that testing. So that's that's some news uh, that we're excited about because then we can move forward with some other studies that we wanted to start once we had the testing completed. And, and those studies are in Miami, uh, Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, and the uh, Veterans Hospital in California, Los Angeles. So, um, gosh, I just keep people keep keep asking things, and, and I or I think of something that that is uh, applicable uh, to these devices uh, that that work so well, and, and people have enjoyed and gotten uh, wonderful results with. But as with anything, we're not practicing medicine. We are not saying these are going to heal anything. Always consult with your physician or with your veterinarian if you want to know what you can use or what you can do, and that's the smartest way to go is to make sure that you're covered and you're doing things appropriately with the medical professionals that you're dealing with. So with that said, thank you for being with me. I've certainly enjoyed it, and I look forward to uh, being with you next Tuesday. Thursday, we have the, uh, the MagnaWave Wellness Webinar with Dr. Gary Nye. And I think that'll be very interesting, and he'll be able to take your questions. And whether you're interested in small animals, people, or uh, large animals, I think what he has to share with us will be very beneficial for your learning process with what PEMF can bring to you. I've always enjoyed talking with you and, and sharing any way I can to help you be more successful and to be healthier and happier. So again, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Talk to you later.